Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ, bless. Hey, this is Captain Hoshai back again with another 15 minutes with the captain. Remember, we're doing a series from out of the heart of men. Today's topic is covetousness. We're going to show you how to overcome the spirit of covetousness. What is covetousness? Covetousness is a strong or immoderate desire for the possession of another. Let's open up with Mark chapter 7, 21. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So Christ said, from out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Remember, y'all, sin starts with your thought first. Go to Mark, Psalm chapter 106, verse 39. Sin starts with the evil thoughts you have first. Read the book of Psalms, chapter 106 and verse 39. Thus were they defiled with their own works. It says, thus were they defiled with their own works. Your own works, your own actions is what defiles you. That's why when you read in Mark chapter 7, verse 20, 20, verse 20 Christ said, that's what defiles you. Your actions, what comes out of you is what defiles you. Your own actions, your own works. Read. And with a horn. And with a horn. Our people defile with their own works, and you go a horn. You go into sin, read. With their own inventions. With their own inventions. Your own evil thoughts. Your, what you invent right here in your mind. We invent the sin. That's it? Yes, sir. Okay. So read that one more time. I like this scripture right there. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, and verse 39. Thus were they defiled with their own works. And with a horn, with their own inventions. Your own inventions, your own evil thoughts, your own evil actions. So sin starts with your thoughts. Sin starts in the mind. Now get that real quick. Uh, let's go right back to Mark chapter 7, verse 21. The book of Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Adulterers, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness. Covetousness. So look, let's get the law pertaining to covetousness. Let's get Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17. Thou shalt not covet. It says, Thou shalt not covet. Read. Thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox. Nor his ass, nor anything that is our neighbor. So look, I'm gonna show y'all something about covetousness. A lot of our people don't understand that covetousness is idolatry. Get that real quick in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. And then I'm gonna give you the judgment for covetousness. Covetousness is idolatry. And the scriptures say, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's wife, nothing that your neighbor got. Read. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, and verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, unclean, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So he said, Paul said, covetousness is idolatry. Get that real quick in Ephesians chapter Five and verse five. Covetousness is idolatry. Covetousness is idolatry. And today we're gonna show you how to overcome this spirit of covetousness. Read the book of Ephesians, chapter five and verse five. For this ye know that no whore, no unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater. A covetous man is an idolater. Read have an inheritance. And the kingdom of Christ. So you ain't gonna get the kingdom of Christ if you are an idolater, if you are a covetous man. Go from there to Revelation real quick. Chapter 21 and verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and idolaters, the covetous man, read, and all life shall have their part in the lake which 
burneth with fire and brimstone. He said they don't have any part which burneth with uh, and fire with lake and brimstone. And that's the second death. Did we say that right there? That's the second death? Yes, sir. Okay, that's the second death. Now, look, let me show you how to overcome the spirit of covetousness. Now, look, the first thing you must learn to be, you must be learned to be content. Second, you must learn to not worry. Third, you must learn to be thankful. Fourth, you can't complain. Stop complaining. God hates complainers. And another, and, and last but not least, you must learn to be satisfied with what you got. Now look, let's deal with the first one. Being content. Go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 40 and verse 18. Ecclesiasticus chapter 40 and verse 18. If you want to overcome that spirit of covetousness, you must learn to be content with what you got. Read. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 40 and verse 18. Verse 18. To labor and to be content. To labor and to be content. To be content, read. With that a man has. With what a man has. Is a sweet life. It says a sweet life. If you want a sweet life, if you want to overcome that spirit of covetousness, you must labor and be content with what you got. Unless you become an idolater. Look, let's get Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. So you got to be content with what you got. Another way you can overcome this spirit of covetousness is stop worrying. Stop worrying what you don't got. Stop worrying about what other people got and have. Stop worrying. Listen to what Christ said. Matthew 6, verse 31. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? It said, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, Read. Oh, what shall we drink? Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Read. Oh, what with all shall we be clothed? Read on. For after all these you things. You know what? That's one of the main things that our people worry about. Food, clothes, jewelry, money, wealth. That's what we worry about. He said, look, don't worry about that. Don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on. If you got something you say, I want to eat at the finest. Rest of one. I want to drive the finest car. I want to wear the flashiest clothes. But he said, don't worry about that. Read. But after all these things, do the Gentiles see? He said, look, the Gentiles are the ones that push those things amongst us. The other nations. They're the ones who make the commercial and push those things amongst you and make you lust after that stuff. They're the ones who set up the uh, entertainment industry and the artists and they push those things and glorify those things and make you covered after those things. Read on. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. The Lord knows you need food. He knows you need clothes. He knows you need a house. Read on. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Read. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. He said, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, stop worrying. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek his commandments. He said, look, everything else going to fall into place. That's it on that? Okay, go from there real quick to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. Uh, the next thing, remember, third, to overcome covetousness, you must learn to become thankful. Be thankful for what the Lord has given you so far. Be thankful for what the Lord has given you. Read. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5 and verse 18. And everything give thanks. It said everything give thanks. Read. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Man, we give God thanks for everything that he has given you. You want to overcome that spirit. You want to overcome that spirit of covetousness. You need to be thankful for what God has placed in your life so far. Go from there to Psalm 100, 100 verse four. Psalms one hundred verse four. You must learn to be content. Stop worrying and be thankful. Read what you got. The Book of Psalms chapter one hundred verse four. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. It said, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. Read. And into his court with praise. And into his court with praise. Read. Be thankful. Be what? Be thankful. Be what? Be thankful. The scripture says, be thankful, read. Unto him. Unto him. Be thankful to him for the things 
everything that you already got. Be thankful for the car you got. Be thankful for the clothes you got on your feet. Read on. And it blesses his name. It bless his name. Be thankful for the things that you already got. Be thankful for the wife that's in your life. Be thankful for the husband that's in your life. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Get that real quick in Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. The book of Numbers chapter 11 and verse 1. And when the people complained. Said when the people complained, it did what? It displeased the Lord. It displeased the Lord. It displeased the Lord when we, uh, uh, when, when we complained. When he already given us food. When he already given us clothes. When he already put a shelter over our head. It displeased the Lord. And when you're not thankful, when you're not content, when you're around here worried, guess what happened? Here comes the spirit of covetousness. Here comes the spirit of covetousness, which makes you an idolater. And all idolaters have a part in the lake of fire. Read that again. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them. You said, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them. A lot of people was destroyed in the wilderness. Why? Because they was complaining. The Lord was providing food. They closed, he said, they closed wax not old on them. And they was complaining. They weren't pleased with no poor. They, they asked for a king when the Lord uh, 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 started to set up uh, the nation of Israel. Instead of being thankful with the God that they had. Our people was complaining and not satisfied with their portion. Now, that you think in Psalm chapter 22, verse 26. You need to be satisfied with what the Most High has given you. If you want to overcome that spirit of covetousness, remember it all starts with your thoughts. Soon as you're not content with what you got, soon as you start worrying, soon as you're not thankful for the things that you have, soon as you start complaining within yourself, Soon as you're not satisfied with what the most high bless you with, guess what comes? Covetousness. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 22 and verse 26. The meat shall eat and be satisfied. You see that the meat, the meat, the meat, the lonely, the humble, they shall eat and be satisfied. The most high God, because some people, I want to eat the filet mignon. I need the filet mignon. I need uh I need the, uh, what's the name of this, uh, that, that fish, um, that bass, this certified bass, that, it's, it's third out of the pound. Oh, yeah, uh, the chili, I need the chili, the, the chili and sea bass. No, be thankful for what you got. Be thankful for what you got. Be satisfied with your portion. Read that real quick. Read that again. Psalm 22 and 26. The meat shall eat and be satisfied. The meat shall eat and be satisfied. Read they shall praise the Lord. They're going to they gonna eat be satisfied and do what, Read. They shall praise the Lord. They're going to praise the Lord. The thankful go going to praise the Lord. The content go going to praise the Lord. The people that don't worry, they're going to praise the Lord, Read. That seek them. Your heart shall live forever. They say they seek them. Those that seek them, your heart going to live forever. Uh, go from there real quick to Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. So to overcome that spirit of consciousness, matter of fact, you know what, before you go there, go to Proverbs 28, verse 16. I forgot something else. This is what you need to hate right here. Right here. Proverbs 28, verse 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28, and verse 16. So if you want to overcome that spirit of consciousness, let's see what the wisest man on the planet Earth said to read. The prince that wanted understanding is also a great oppressor. Read. But he that hated covetousness. It said he that hate covetousness. He that hate covetousness. That's what you need to have a strong dislike for. And it demands action. I mean, you need to. And if, 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 you, got a, if you hate covetousness and you got a strong dislike for covetousness, you're going to go right back to Colossians 3 and 5 and you're going to mortify. You're going to kill it. You're going to kill that spirit of covetousness. Read. But he that hated covetousness shall prolong his days. You see that you're going to prolong, prolong your days. Why? Because you're going to avoid becoming an idolater. So look, y'all, with that, and this is another 15 minutes with the captain, but I pray and hope that this class was edified. I pray and hope you got what you need to overcome this spirit. But there we're going to say shalom. You used to scream black power.
while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.